Hey everyone. That's right. We're doing it. We're doing the big one. Streets of Rage 2. What an amazing soundtrack. This is uh, probably the best beat em up game ever created. Uh, certainly, it has the best, one of the best soundtracks and the best soundtrack in a beat em up game I've ever heard by the masterful Yuzo Koshiro. Uh, yeah, let's just get into it. My boy Axel. Pretty much by now everyone's familiar with Streets of Rage 2. If you're not, I'm very impressed with the cave you've been living in for the last nearly 30 years. Uh, this game has been ported, re-released, remade. It's been everywhere. For good reason. It's one of the best designed beat em up games ever. Hi, cat. How you doing? Being visited by a cat. There's not any one thing that makes Streets of Rage 2, for me, the best beat em up game ever made. Uh, it just gets a number of things right. Gameplay is pretty well done. The combat system is diverse enough. I mean, it's not as diverse as uh, Streets of Rage 3's combat system, but it's still pretty diverse. You've got your basic attacks. You can double tap forward. You can hit the attack button to do the grand upper attack. There's a couple of special attacks bound to the A button, which use up your health. As you can see, you can pick up weapons. And there's just something satisfying about hitting bad guys in the head with a lead pipe. The game supports two players, which is very important for a beat-em-up. Graphics are pretty darn good. Uh, the characters, while not gigantic, are large enough. The animation's pretty solid. Oh, that jerk. It's okay, I ate a whole turkey to regain my health. One of the tricks to this game is if you uh, time your punch presses just right, enemies stay in hit stun forever. It's the sort of thing they probably should have noticed in bug, bug testing and fixed, but it really helps against the bosses. Except for the final boss in the game, he doesn't fall for it really. So while it's somewhat simple to uh, breeze through most of the game, uh, the final boss is still fun. In Japan, the Streets of Rage series is known as uh, Bare Knuckle. And uh, the first two games in the series, Streets of Rage, Streets of Rage 2, 
did not change very much from their Japanese counterparts. Uh, a few characters' names changed, uh, a few animations here and there, but whoop de doo uh, Really, the biggest edit, I think, is that uh, Blaze's character sprite was edited so that her uh, lingerie isn't as obvious when she does her flying kicks. The uh, transparency effects here from the lights are not very impressive on uh, modern hardware, LCD televisions, uh, Mega SG, things like that. But if I was playing this on a CRT, it would actually look like an like a real transparency. That was one thing. Uh, 16-bit game developers were really good at back in the day, especially on the Genesis, is uh, knowing how to design their graphics so that transparencies looked transparent, even when they weren't. Because the Genesis, uh, while you could do some very uh, late-era programming tricks to do legitimate transparencies, for the most part, you didn't see transparencies on the Genesis. It wasn't really capable of it in hardware, per se so they'd have to use tricks for it. Love this rain effect and the music that's about to kick in. There's another fighting game that I'm going to play and make a video of in a week or two here for uh, Watermelon Games Paprium, which that game's been getting some grief for excessively falling for the, the, the jump kick trick, where the jump kick in beat-em-up games tends to be super overpowered. Uh, that's definitely true in Streets of Rage 2 as well, and if Streets of Rage 2 is considered one of the best beat-em-up games, well, you can't knock other beat-em-up games for, you know, not taking that into account with their uh, enemy AI. I will say, the enemy AI in this game is not spectacular. It's good. Uh, later stages, especially if you play on the harder difficulties, throw a lot of enemies on screen at once, and the game can get really challenging. I like the music here on the bridge stage as well, uh, which is a good thing because I don't generally like bridge stages in fighting games. Uh, they're kind of a trope that, for me, just I just find unoriginal. Second only to the elevator stage, which seems to be in every beat-em-up game. I was playing Brawl Brothers the other day, and one of the downsides to that game is it takes the uh, elevator stage to new heights by having a bunch of elevators in a, in a single stage that you have to navigate. like my cat is back again. She wants cat treats. She figures if she comes up here enough, she can beg for them. I really don't want to give her any cat treats, though, because it's about an hour to my cat's dinner time. It's going to be amusing watching this footage back to see how much of my cat shows up in it. one thing I'm glad about, since I'm not trying to professionally produce my videos or monetize anything, hey, if a cat appears, so be it. All the better, honestly. Ah. 
Another thing in this game that I haven't been able to show off yet is uh, those yellow guys can uh, throw you. And uh, one feature that they added in this game, which was really sorely needed in the fighting game genre, was a uh, throw recovery. So uh, basically, if you get thrown and you... Uh, I think it's if you tap the jump button. Maybe it's if you tap up, but I think it is actually if you tap the jump button uh, right before you land or hold it when you land, uh, you'll recover from the throw without taking damage. It's been a second since I've had to do that, and honestly, I've played this game so much it just feels automatic to me. It's, oh no, I'm getting thrown, hold the button. Pro recoveries are uh, a feature that I, I wish more beat em up games had. Just lends diversity. One of the fun things about playing this game two-player is uh, you can actually throw each other and uh, execute uh, combo combination moves in, in that fashion, uh, like a throw into a jump kick and so on. Also, while the game does uh, throw more enemies at you if you play in two players, it's certainly a lot easier because you can tag team certain enemies. You don't have to take on all the masses yourself. This guy's fun. He's not very easy to beat if you don't do the uh, grand upper move. And he's kind of a jerk. Oops, didn't time that very well. Like I said, to do that move, it's a double tap forward and, and the attack button. Sometimes the double taps don't come out as uh, smoothly as I like. Ouch! What a jerk! Okay, he gonna have to die. I don't know how that last one missed me. Hm. when people think of Streets of Rage 2, it's uh, this third stage here that people remember the most, uh, because you start out at the entrance to an amusement park, and uh, eventually you end up in the fun house and going through the uh, amusement park, the different exhibits and whatnot, and things get crazy. I think, if anything, this stage embodies the... Uh, spirit of Streets of Rage 2 more than anything. So first we start out in the arcade here. When I was growing up in Seattle, uh, the Seattle Center used to have an arcade, uh, amusement park rides, Science Center, various exhibits. See, there was that throw cancel I was talking about. And uh, the arcade had closed long before I moved away from there. But that was one of the places growing up that I'd play games like uh, 
Street Fighter 2, the various Neo Geo fighting games. I've often said on this channel that I'd only play games that had, uh, or I'd mostly play games that had a significant meaning to me in my life in some way. Um, you'd think that Streets of Rage, since it's so mainstream and so popular, wouldn't necessarily uh, be one of those groundswell games for me, but much like Street Fighter 2, it occupied a large part of my teenage years, even after it came out. This was another one of those games that people in my friend group, whether they enjoy video games or not, video games or not, would enjoy playing. Especially if you cranked up the tunes, it was hard not to get into it. As we progress on to the uh, pirate ship ride here with the, uh, well, I know it's not the Magic Kingdom, but the uh, Sega Kingdom, maybe, in the background. That throw recovery came in handy there. In terms of video games growing up, Streets of Rage 2 is one of those that uh, definitely made me a few friends and kept me social somewhat, because uh, I tend to be more of a loner in, in some regards. I mean, I socialize really well, I get along with people, but I don't like doing a lot of the normal activities constantly. It's only in recent years that I've uh, really come to enjoy uh, things like board games and uh, Card games like Magic the Gathering, for example. Normally, Electra doesn't kick my butt that bad. Or Eliza, as the case may be. There's two of them. One's named Electra, and the other one's not. been terribly long since I uh, played this game last. I try to play it a couple times a year. It's just one of those go-to games. Usually I play it more often than that. There are certain spots that give me fits, though. Uh, usually I don't lose a life back there. Uh, it tends to be against the uh, boss at the end of this stage. I'm not sure why they're exploding alien eggs, but hey! One thing to be on the lookout for is they, the developers like to hide power-ups behind foreground objects, so I always make sure to uh, press the attack button when I'm standing in front of these things, because on occasion there might be a food item or a, a score item hidden there. Correctly, Final Fight did the same thing on its uh, final stage.
What I love about Streets of Rage 2 is it's sort of grounded in reality. I mean, yes, we're inside a funhouse here and then inside like an alien stage. And other video games would uh, come up with an excuse for this. You know, like aliens were uh, attacking the planet or uh, genetic experimentation or whatnot. And in this, it's just, it's a funhouse exhibit. So of course it's an alien funhouse exhibit. When it comes to uh, gameplay, pacing, graphics, audio, this game pretty much gets everything right. Uh, I would say the gameplay itself, yeah, it's a little dated in spots, but it's still pretty solid. I will say when it comes to uh, gameplay mechanics, Streets of Rage 3 is the better game. But, Streets of Rage 3 uh, has terrible pacing, the uh, soundtrack isn't that good, it's okay, but it's not as good as this, and uh, the US version at least, they made so many tweaks with regards to the level pacing and the difficulty, it's just, it's not as fun as this. The Japanese version of Streets of Rage 3, Bare Knuckle 3, is a little bit better in that regard, but still... It's... it's no Streets of Rage 2. Having said what I just said, uh, I do... I do enjoy Streets of Rage 3. It's not uh, a triple A uh, home run like Streets of Rage 2 is, but it's a pretty darn good beat em up as well. Certainly worth playing. Uh, I don't know if it's worth the uh, crazy asking prices that uh, it sells for on auction sites these days, but the nice thing is it's included with most Sega compilations these days. So, uh, yeah, if you have access to any of the Sega Classics collections, pretty much anywhere, or the Sega Genesis collections, you have access to Streets of Rage 3, so you can play it without uh, feeling the pain that we felt back in the day. Because back in the day, we had to pay 60 bucks for that game. Or we could rent it for like $5 a day. Which, that's the reason why they made the US version of the game so darn difficult, is because they didn't want people to rent the game and beat it and not shell out the 60 bucks. One thing I like about Streets of Rage 3, however, compared to 2, is that uh, Streets of Rage 3 has a dash ability, and that's just something I really love in beat-em-up games. And it's unfortunate this game doesn't have a dash ability, unless you're playing the, the character Skate. But that's really my only complaint. This game is linear as well. There really aren't any alternate paths per se. Uh, there is a bit of a decision-making choice near the end, but nothing major. When I was playing Brawl Brothers the other day, one thing I like about that game is there are a few spots where you can uh, take alternate paths and whatnot. And I always appreciate when a game offers that in a, a way that's not just game-breaking. I, I feel like Streets of Rage 3, because of the way it was laid out, there's a spot in the game where if you don't navigate it just so and do things exactly right, uh, 
you're going to get the bad ending. And uh, it's not the sort of thing that you realize the first or second time you play. And then by the time you know what's coming, you almost... You don't feel a sense of accomplishment, you feel like you've overcome a burden. So I really appreciate games that give you some decision-making and some alternate pathways without making them a burden. I will say a Watermelon's beat em up game that just came out recently, Paprium, is really awesome in that regard. Uh, there are a lot of alternate paths, but the game doesn't uh, punish you when it's presenting them to you. I've never quite understood why there's a baseball field stage right after an amusement park stage. I can only assume they must be connected, and uh, they took inspiration from uh, Disneyland and uh, the uh, ballpark in Anaheim there where the Angels play, since uh, they're located pretty darn close to each other, <laughs> to say the least. Of course, the uh, spoiler here is uh, after I get past this section, we learn that not not all is what it seems with the baseball field. So here's the elevator stage I was talking about. Every fighting game or every beat em up game seems to have an elevator stage. What old Abaday Day. Yes, I'm going to be spamming this move a lot here. The boat stage here is not my favorite stage, but the music is spectacular. Probably won't be the last time I say that the music in this game is spectacular. This is one of the few soundtracks uh, back in the day I would uh, use the music player in the game's options menu, and I re would record the uh, music to cassette tape. Yes, that's how old I am. I used to use cassette tapes. They even still make those things anymore? Ouch. Just... It slapped me. Some of the character animations in this game are pretty great, too. The walking animation for Axel is pretty darn badass. Uh, the big guy there that I just defeated is a laugh, and uh, the look on his face when he, like, jumps at you, it's pretty comical. Granted, the uh, character animations are better in Streets of Rage 3.
this was one of the few Sega Genesis games that uh, not only did I own, but many of my friends owned as well. So it was one of those where if people came over, they played at your place. But if you were, went over to their place, you could play it there without having to bring your cartridge. It was just one of those common games anybody who enjoyed video games had. And it was that good. Kind of like how everybody back in the day owned Street Fighter or uh, Mortal Kombat. Growing up in Seattle, this was also one of those games that was just great to play on a rainy night. And there were a lot of those growing up. Again, that's where the throw recovery comes in handy. I do like the uh, top side sections of the ship stage, though. It's cool to see the water go by in the background. That's what always impressed me about Sega Genesis games, too, is the uh, art direction. They knew that the system didn't have the same color gamut as the Super Nintendo, so they were operating at a uh, disadvantage with that regard. So. The art direction had to be very cautious, very, very smart. Developers of Genesis games definitely uh, understood the hardware's strengths and weaknesses and uh, did a good job of, of counteracting for a lot of the weaknesses. For the most part, growing up, I was a Super Nintendo kid, but by the time this game came out, I had a Sega Genesis, and this was in my collection. In fact, this is my original copy. I don't own very many Sega Genesis games, or Super Nintendo games for that matter, these days. Most of my cartridge collection I've sold off in the intervening years. Just at some point, you uh, end up with too many things in your life, taking up so much space, and uh, you feel like you're a prisoner to all your stuff. But there are a few key things you gotta hang on to, and for me, Streets of Rage 2 is one of them. Much like that copy of Gunstar Heroes that uh, I played some months ago. Wow, he punched me right in the nuts. I don't tend to use the uh, A button special moves because they take off life. And if I'm in a sticky situation anyways, I don't want to compound the problem. I'll use one against this bald bull wannabe over here to uh, kind of display what they look like. So that was one of the uh, special attacks, a uh, nice combination of moves there. not know he could punch through me that way. Maybe I should have known. 
Aha. It's my own fault I tried to use the uh the hit stun move there. like having to use that move, but if he's going to grab me and I'm going to take damage anyways, that's one of the few times when I definitely will. I remember him being easier. Eh. Sometimes you remember the patterns and sometimes the patterns kick you in the face. Not every beat em up game has a uh, beach stage. I'm pretty sure every Streets of Rage game has a beach stage in it. thing about Axel is he can hold on to the bladed weapons for a decent amount of time. You can hit the uh, jump and attack buttons to throw the weapon. But then that gets rid of it. And it's not the best thing to do. One feature that the uh, Streets of Rage games pioneered, like I don't, I don't know if any other fighting games did it necessarily, but Streets of Rage uh, had a lot of vertical sections, uh, diagonal scrolling sections. You no, know, they just kind of chunk up the levels, and you need that. You need that in a, a beat 'em up. And you can't just have levels that go left to right, left to right, left to right. Uh, having them move diagonally and, and, and up and down just, you know, it feels more like the real world and it, it keeps the game grounded in a way that's enjoyable. The Streets of Rage series, even Streets of Rage 3, was always well in the ballpark there with that sort of level diversity. Thank you. 
I must say it's uh, a little hard to go back to Streets of Rage 2 when I've been playing Streets of Rage 4 so much on the Nintendo Switch. Uh, that game is spectacular. I don't tend to play a lot of modern games, but that one is just such a great take on a on a classic formula. And, and Streets of Rage 4, to me, is the uh, what was promised with Streets of Rage, but not quite delivered. It's just unfortunate that it's not a Sega Genesis game. For sure, Streets of Rage 4 is a spectacular game. There's just so much about it that it gets right. Gameplay mechanics, the levels, everything. This is definitely a boss battle where uh, it would be nice to have a second player on my side here. Being able to split up the uh, enemies would be so much easier. I think we'll go ahead and use a continue here, may as well. Last time I played this, I did a bit better. I think I got at least to the final stage before having to use a continue. Back in the day when I would play this almost religiously, uh, I could at least get to the uh, final boss before I was at risk of uh, needing to use a continue. But my skills and my memory have certainly waned in the intervening years, and uh, let's face it, I don't play this game on the regular anymore. That's okay, though. They put the continue function there for a reason. When it comes to fighting game tropes, the uh, factory stage is another one that I'm not necessarily in love with, but I will say this stage at least uh, is busy enough to uh, not seem super boring. The importance of this game in uh, Sega's catalog cannot be understated, or not be overstated. It can be understated, but it's not an exaggeration to say that this is one of the games that made Sega go from second place against Nintendo to uh, first place between this game, uh, Mortal Kombat, Sonic the Hedgehog. There was a time there where uh, Nintendo was was ahead and, and cornered the video game industry, and Sega had uh, fought, scrapped, and done everything they could to uh, eventually overtake them, and they were then neck and neck for a number of years. It was a great time to be 
uh, a fan of video games because you knew that both companies were going to do their all-fired best with, with their, not just their own titles, but in getting third parties on board. These days, game systems generally have the same software libraries. And uh, while yes, there are exclusives that separate each system from the others, certainly in the case of Nintendo's, I would say nowadays the uh, video game playing experience, if you buy one system, you, you, you end up getting 90% of the experience that everyone else gets on the other systems, simply because the games are generally the same. Um, it's the other 10% these days where the flavor comes from. Uh, you've got Sony's exclusives, Nintendo's exclusives, Microsoft's exclusives, and so on and so forth. Whereas back in the day, uh, you'd You'd have a Sega Genesis and a Super Nintendo, and uh, even though the system shared a number of games in common, your library would be pretty pretty sick with uh, exclusives that were on one or the other. It's funny to think about, too. Back in the day, sports games generally were so much better on the Sega Genesis. Uh, just the, the faster processor and being able to put more on screen at once really helped sports games. And it also didn't hurt that Electronic Arts was on board with them from day one, basically. And nowadays, sports games are almost an afterthought in video games, apart from the... Uh, yearly John Madden football. And here we are at another elevator stage. Alright, let's have a talk, little knife-throwing guy. What did the five fingers say to the face? Slap. Should have been using this more throughout the game. I do kind of like to keep things amusing and fun, but sometimes you just need to take advantage of the uh, gameplay glitches that the gods offer you. Now riddle me this, one of these is called Molecule, the other is called Particle. Now a Particle, I assume, is bigger than a Molecule, and is made up of many Molecules, and yet these guys are roughly the same size. I feel like there should be a third one, named Adam. I'm not a dad, but sometimes I come up with dad jokes. Ooh. Shot through the heart, and he's to blame. You know, things are getting real when you end up in a uh, hotel lobby. That's how you know the game's about to be getting to the conclusion.
While the hotel stage is somewhat as a is somewhat of a cliche in fighting games, I do think that section right there is a really well done artistically. And once we get out of the elevators here, we'll be in another section that looks really awesome. The Genesis, of course, had ports of a number of uh, arcade beat-em-up games. Punisher, Captain America. I think the Super Nintendo ended up with Captain America. Maybe it ended up with Punisher, too. I can't recall. I feel like Captain America on the Super Nintendo was pretty tragic, though. Sega had a number of good Spider-Man and X-Men games. Some of them weren't exactly beat-em-ups, but they count. Of course, the Super Nintendo had all three Final Fight games. As I mentioned in my Final Fight video, that's kind of a classic, even if it had its issues on Super Nintendo. Final Fight 2 and Final Fight 3 are both pretty darn good. Not sure which one I like the most. They're, to me, somewhat equivalent. Uh, but they both have decent character rosters and a good amount going on in them. Anybody's watching this and hasn't played Streets of Rage 2 before, uh, this, this boss battle should at least look somewhat familiar because uh, if you've played Streets of Rage 4, Shiva is in that game, as is uh, well I won't spoil everything, but Shiva is in that game as well. battle against Mr. X. He is no fun, thanks to that machine gun. Really, the challenging thing about Mr. X is all the uh, cannon fodder he throws out at the same time. Which just really confuses the issue. He's easier than Shiva, though. Yes, I feel good. I, I feel like we're going to beat Mr. X here. Pretty much Streets of Rage 2. Uh, it's a pretty darn good game from beginning to end. Very well produced, very well paced, fun to play, great to listen to, pretty good to look at. 
you own a Sega Genesis and don't have this game, I don't know what to tell you. I'm surprised. But if you do own a Sega Genesis, you probably have this game. Uh, if you uh, ended up coming to this video because you've been playing Streets of Rage 4 or had curiosity about the series for some reason, uh, definitely you should seek out this game and play it in any way you can. Like I said, it's generally on every Sega collection. So if you have a Nintendo Switch, it's on that collection. Uh, it's on the PS3 collections, PS2, it's been everywhere. Um, sometimes the emulation quality may vary, but I will say this is one of the games that the uh, Switch doesn't suffer really much in regards to input lag or anything like that. So if you have a Nintendo Switch and the uh, Sega collection is on sale for like 10 or 15 bucks, which it often is, I'd say pick it up and you'll have a grand time. Plus, you'll be able to play a bunch of other games as well. So that's pretty much Streets of Rage 2. I'm going to end the video shortly here. Thanks for watching. Um, I've got a couple more beat-em-ups I want to make videos for, but really this this is the one. I mean, this is the beat-em-up that kind of really defined the genre for us who enjoyed 16-bit games. So with that said, I'm out of here. Thanks for watching.